All right, that was fun. Did you have fun? Yes. <laughs> are you tired also? Because there are many volunteers, I'm sure, we're very tired, but I'm sure we're also overjoyed because that was so much fun. We're so happy to have done this. We've been waiting for two years, and we've done it. That was... People have been asking in different random channels about stats. Now here they are. Some ticket breakdowns. We have sold 1,194 tickets in person. Um, in person tickets, I should say. And 143 online tickets. Um, I think it was quite interesting to see that the remote participation was not just from people who are not in Dublin. Actually, there were quite a few people joining also from Dublin. I also actually saw quite a few people joining right outside on their phone, which is true spirit of remote, I think. Um, and we have on, on venue list, we have 247 users. Um, there are quite a lot of chats, over 900 of them. At the same time, there are lots of people also watching on YouTube. Um, the streams currently have been all up, uh, published on the website. And if you go to the streams, you can probably still see the numbers are growing. So there are quite a lot of people still watching on YouTube. And there were also a lot of people watching live on YouTube and probably on their TV at home. And the gender breakdown, according to the ticket sales, this uh, people who have identified as male, we have so it's 834, and female, 210, those who identify as other, 18. And there's, this is a country breakdown. You can read about it. I'm really glad to, to see that Ireland is number one. At some point, I was trending not in a good place. So I'm really happy that now it's Ireland is indeed number one. I think we also saw quite a lot of tickets being sold during the last few days with Irish developers joining and Irish communities joining in the last few days. I'm really, really happy to welcome so many local communities joining the conference. Um, can take a, you can take a moment and look and can see that uh, the UK and Germany and Netherlands and US are the top five. And in April, we run the talk proposals. We received 429 proposals. And I do believe we broke the record. Vibi, am I right? We broke the record. Yes, we broke the record for receiving number one, like top numbers of proposals this year. Um, and then we went through community voting this year and we received 23,926 votes. We did not break the record for this, which means all of you will be able to participate in breaking the record next year for us because we have been asking people who have joined, who have um, joined the Europe High Zone since 2015 to the current year. Every single year we run community voting. Those who have participated can participate in, can, those who had joined in person conference before or remote in the long line years, they can participate in the community voting and this informs us what kind of talks or discussions or topics you would like to see. Um, so please, next year, help us, help us select what you like to see. And out of all of the proposals we received, 29% of the speakers identify as being from underrepresented groups. And this year, we also ran a lot of events outside of the main program. Uh, we have, I've listed all of the eight events over here. 
I'm particularly proud of the Transcode event organized by Naomi Cedar on Tuesday and the Maker Fest organized by Vicky and Nicholas. Hope you're both here and Naomi as well. And um, Vicky and Nicholas put in a lot of effort into making the EuroPython conference maker friendly. There was, there was a sort of, we were as slightly worried that in this kind of conference center with everything being very health and safety cautious, shall we say, it was not going to work out. So they went through so much effort to make sure that this conference is maker friendly. And I really thank them for the effort that they put in to prove that we, EuroPython, can also welcome makers. And we would really, really, really like to continue doing that. So in the future, in the future years, wherever we go, I would really also like to welcome the maker community to join us, make something wonderful, just invent things with us. And I would also like to report that we have zero COC incident this year. Yes. <laughs> I think we definitely should welcome Naomi Cedar every single year to do a brief at the opening. That sounds like a really good idea. I would also like to uh, give a report on financial aid. This year we received a lot of a large number of financial aid applications, 130 applications from over 40 different countries. And 110 of these applicants um, are joining us for the first time or applying for the first time to EuroPython. Um, and 60 of the applicants identify as a member of an underrepresented group. This year's financial aid budget from EuroPython Society is 20,000. And I'm really grateful for the work of Sebastian and Chuk, who have done incredible work, and Vicky as well, who have done incredible work to make sure every single application is considered carefully. When somebody drops out, we immediately go to allocate this, this the remaining funds to the next. Um, the, the amount of care that they put in is absolutely incredible. I think this is exactly the kind of community spirit that we should embrace. So thank you very much, Sebastian and Chick. <laughs> now, we are, we are experimenting with a hybrid format. As you can see, we have cameras everywhere. We, well, not everywhere, but just two in every room, but I guess that's quite a lot. Um, we, so this year, I think it worked. I think a lot of things have worked well in that we involved um, our streaming team, Gonzo, to have helped us to design a workflow. Um, this is something that I am personally very passionate about that I think that we could design a sort of workflow that is easy to implement and not too expensive to, to, to take, to take uh, to basically to port around. So uh, I'm sharing this wiring diagram that um, uh, like our team drew. Um, this is the implementation of this current year's conference, there are things to improve as well. So you're very welcome to share and to give us feedback. If you're interested in how to do something like this or do with something of a smaller scale or just have good ideas, have like ideas about how to motorize some things, we're really looking forward to hearing these kind of feedback. So please just email us, get in touch. We're really, really happy to hear feedback. Um, and this year, we're also, we're also putting a lot of effort making EuroPython more welcoming for everybody. Um, Theophanes and VB and Diego run a really incredible mentorship program uh, that helps people, especially first 
first-time speakers from underrepresented communities to learn from more experienced speakers so that they build more confidence to, to be able to, to, to feel that they can speak as well as somebody who's poor from more privileged backgrounds. And this year we also have a lot of first-time speakers uh, who have benefited from this program. Um, just want to say great thanks to Theophanes, VB, and Diego for carrying this through, for doing this with great humor as well. Thank you so much. And we, and Chuk on Thursday in the open space also ran a mentor sprint to help people, uh, to help less experienced people feel the confidence to join us tomorrow and Sunday and in the future to, to sprint with others. In addition, we also made sure that we, we can make it easy for people to join the conference. So we had free childcare service. This is a picture uh, taken. Uh, we, the babysitter we hired transformed one of the conference rooms to make it more child-friendly to give children activities to play so that their parents can just just come to the conference and have fun like other, any other people without worrying about what, how their children are doing. So I, I'm really happy that we managed to do this very smoothly and I think this is something that but there's no reason why we, we wouldn't do this every other year, every year because this is something I think quite basic. And we also have pronoun stickers to make people feel that, well, I don't think I need to explain this because these are very basic things. So we have pronoun speakers, stickers, and we also have things, we also have signage in the toilets. We originally wanted to put more signage on the toilets to, 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 be, to make non-binary people feel more welcome. Um, this was not very easy to do in the, in the venue, so we decided to just remind people to respect other people's gender identity and expression. And I'm really grateful that we have received no complaints, no incidents. Um, thank you, really thank you for being respectful. And now for something different. We are having a prize time. I am now welcoming Andrew and Sam from Northern Ireland's Raspberry, Raspberry Jam to, prevent, to present the awards for the fastest completion of the robot maze. Thank you. Hello. Um, so Andrew decided to drop out, so he's obviously not here. Um, so I'll be on behalf of him as well. Just a brief explanation. So I'm Sam. I'm part of the many, many member of teams, or many members of a team, uh, of volunteers in Belfast who participate and run a Raspberry Jam in Belfast. We would love to invite you all if you want to join us. We have tickets that go out every month, usually during the academic year if you're interested in going. It's usually a family event, so there's nothing like, you know, taking down enterprise networks. If you're interested in that, I feel like there's an event for you. But we uh, hack traffic lights and the such. So if that suits your ability or if you're interested, by all means, there'll be tickets online. Um, just Google around and you should be able to find it. More importantly, the actual event that took, or the workshop in the MakerFest was the, the robot challenge. So the quickest time was 17 and a half seconds by brute force, because there's no way you got the sensors to work. Just kind of like rammed against the walls to see how far and how quickly it got round. And I would like to present the award to Hubert Blotlowski, and I would like him to invite him to collect his prize after the event and for a photo. But thank you so much to everybody who took part. I apologize for equipment, but everybody who took part was fantastic, and genuinely, it was a great, a great impression to see all the makers who took part in the event. Thank you. And I, also, I was also reminded to tell you that tomorrow there is sprint, so don't overindulge tonight because please come over tomorrow and there will be, uh, in this 
somebody must have messed up with the slide. I have no idea what it's supposed to say. This in this building, okay. <laughs> you mess up, right? <laughs> Refresh. I think we got the gist, Chuk. Yes. <laughs> so, yes. So tomorrow, starting at 9 a.m., there will at this bill. There will be sprint orientation. Am I correct, Chuk? No, let's do this. Like, you come and join us. Run, run, run. Um, sorry, Re really, really sorry. It's technical difficulties. We did make the slides, but it doesn't update here. Um, so what happened is that tomorrow there will be sprints in the building. So that will be in the Liffey Hall. Um, some rooms in Liffey, I, I can't remember which one, and the Wichita Hall on the second level. So that will be sprints. Um, so if you want to check out which project you want to work on, please go to our website. Uh, just go to EuroPython website and then find the sprints, and then uh, you can check out all the projects there. All the details are there, and um, thank you. Slash sprints. Yes. sprints. Slash sprints. Yes. And I do believe that you still have time to propose more sprints if you want to. So please and go and just tell us all the wonderful and, or weird stuff that you do. Like, just make a PR there and then we will merge it. We'll promise to merge it by tonight. And now it's thank you time. I just want to thank all of these volunteers who have been with us throughout the entire year, throughout this very difficult and challenging times to have made EuroPython 2022 happen. So I think some of you have left, and I don't see any of you here, so I'm not sure, you're going up. <laughs> I just want to invite every volunteer who have contributed a lot of their time, a lot of their love and care onto stage, and let's just join the party. So, I think Alex is not here, but Alex, I think everybody knows Alex. He is, uh, he is a scheduling master, he is, yes. So he, he really designed our um, program. And Almo is also not here with us, Almo is, the person that basically run all of the remote operators. He designed the whole workflow. He made charts. It's, it's great. He's not here with us, but, but he will be here with us over there in true spirit of remotes. And Anna Jane and Beth, they are not here either but they helped Naomi and the rest of the team plan for the transcodes. And Artul, well, he's the infrastructure master. He, this year, we made a lot of infrastructure changes, including decoupling our <laughs> program and our ticket, and that's all down to Artul. And Cassie, I hope you're here. If you're not, thank you for all of your work. You've all of the work you've done for Transcode. Everybody knows Chuk, I've already said. So much nice work for diversity and inclusion and Finnate. And Diego is here, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Diego is the person, if you ever see a LinkedIn post, that's him. Um, and Francesco, if something is wrong for, with our infrastructure, I do not know how he does it, just several seconds later, things are just fixed. Uh, and Nico, yeah, this is the guy that just ran the whole remote, making everything so seamless. Thank you so much. And Anders is our treasurer. If anybody ever needs us to pay something, this is a person you should beg. <laughs> <laughs> Joanna also helped us a lot with Finnate. Kevin is the COC person, one of the COC person. Laïs, Laïs is the person that designed all of our stickers, and quite last minute, I should say, when I asked her, <laughs> like, 
And I asked her, can you find us a designer? She said, not really, but I will learn everything in one day. And she did. Uh, all of the stickers and this big banner, many, many things she designed. Martin, there's a lot of things Martin did to streamline our whole remote setup. Um, and Naomi is the person we go to for advice. That's basically it. And Nicholas is our biggest champion. He keeps us in touch with what the community is really about. Ernesto helped us design so much about the schedule. He, he, he gave a lot of inputs for what kind of talks are more interesting. Um, Patrick is the website guy. If you, think the pat if you think the website is pretty, that's because of Patrick. And if there is any bug, that's also, well, Patrick will fix it. <laughs> And Sanger Shannon, all of the speaker tweets that you've seen, all of the other blogs that you've seen, he's part of everything communication related. And Sebastian is the person that just made all these magic with spreadsheets. <laughs> <laughs> and then Finney just magically run without any hassle. And he would follow up every single help desk ticket um, re re regard regarding finite, and there is no ticket open currently, I think. Two, Two tickets open <laughs> early out of, I don't remember how many, how many applications. So that's him. And Sylvia, Sylvia, I think every sponsor downstairs would want to meet Sylvia because hundreds of hundreds of emails later, She's still not confused. She just knows who is who out of, we have 23 sponsors. She just knows every single person, answers every single email, and collects all of the data, spreadsheeting. That's Sylvia. And Sylvanus keeps talking about animal facts, <laughs> and sometimes incorrect ones. Um, and Sylvanus is the person that helped us answer all of the help desk tickets. And if it's not answers, he will pester every single person nonstop. So that every single user of EuroPython is satisfied. And VB, he leads our communication. He leads, he co-leads our program. He's the person that looks at free talks and just tells people, don't do this, don't do that. This is not correct. And this is why our schedule works for some reason. And, and this is also why this year we'll have, I hope that you can see that we'll have much more friendly tone because VB is the chief editor. VB like to sign off with your friendly neighborhood, neighborhood Spider-Man. I don't know why, but I think people like it. Um, and Vic, Vicky is the person why we are connected with Ireland. I cannot express my gratitude for Vicky. She, she loses sleep over social events because we didn't have any social event venue. For a while, she would just Go, through, go around in Dublin and then just suddenly get new ideas and follow up with every single one of them. And she would recommend all of the great people in Ireland, all of the great-minded people in Ireland, and connect with us. And this is why we feel that this year we belong in, in Dublin. So thank you so much, Vicky. Thank you so much. And Sayan is, well, works with Sylvia. And <laughs> <laughs> doing sponsoring stuff. And yeah, they're both super organized. Oop, that's not right. And now we have all of the on-site volunteers and remote volunteers, I think, joining us, I hope, if this works. 
we can see all of the people who are working in yellow t-shirts and also all of the people who you're not seeing because they are somewhere around the world coordinating with all of the people speaking remotely or all of the people who are attending remotely. Woo! Please, let's give them a huge thank you. I think I missed Yasmin from this slide. I just, <laughs> I just want to say, Yasmin, thank you so much for being with us this whole year. You, Yasmin has been volunteering with us for two years. Last year, she did remote volunteering. And normally, we were not monitoring a lot of different channels of communication. She would be sending messages saying, this, this is spam. That needs to be banned. She just sees things. I do not know how, but she just sees things. And she would be the person who would be the first one to start a newsletter and say, she doesn't pester people. She just leaves comments and saying, I think we should do this. And then we do that. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Okay, do we need to take a picture or are you already done that? Sure. You did that. Well, no, no, you have one more. You, you need to be in it too. Yeah, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's take a picture. Where's Nico? Yeah. Tall one at the back. <laughs> one, two, three, two. One more. One more active, right? Let's raise the hand something. school picture. <laughs> now, all of our volunteers are part of EuroPython Society, and I hope that you, through all our volunteers, through getting to know all of our volunteers, you're interested in also joining the society and help us plan and run the next year's EuroPython. If you're interested in giving us feedback, please email us at volunteers at europython.eu. Or just talk to us tomorrow. Don't get too overindulged. Talk to us tomorrow during the sprints. So see you in 2023 somewhere in Europe. Yes. <laughs>